So in the previous video, we spoke about growth factors and growth factor receptors. So growth factor receptors are proteins found on the surface of many human cells. And when those receptors bind their ligand, which is the growth factor, that somehow sends a signal into the cell to sell that, tell that cell to go from the G1 phase into the S phase. How? How do growth factor receptors work? That's the purpose of this video, to talk about Growth, growth factor receptors in general. In general, this is how they work. So remember, growth factors come from some cell, either the same cell, autocrine, or nearby cell, paracrine. Growth factors bind growth factor receptors and then trigger somehow the progression from G1 to S phase. How does that happen? For us to talk about that, we have to first talk a lot more about this receptor, growth factor receptor. This receptor is actually pretty complicated. How complicated? Well, I'm going to tell you that most growth factor receptors, and we talked about them in the last video, like EGFR, PDGFR, FGFR, VGFR, IGF, I, I, IGFR, all those growth factor receptors, they are all receptor tyrosine kinases. Most growth factor receptors are receptor tyrosine kinases. Wait, what is that? Well, that's a good question. So it's really important to understand RTKs or receptor tyrosine kinases. Um, so let me introduce this concept to you slowly, but um, it'll make a lot of sense very shortly. So we got to unpack that word or that phrase, receptor tyrosine kinases. First, let's talk about kinases. So from biochemistry, you should recall kinases are enzymes that participate in a process called phosphorylation. So here's a, here's a quick review of how kinases work. There are two videos that I have posted after this one that will review the entire process of kinases performing phosphorylation and the, the results of phosphorylation. So you should be watching that video after this one, maybe after this one. No, maybe after the next one. We'll see. So a kinase. Kinase is an enzyme. Uh, enzymes have substrates. So enzymes bind to their substrate through a substrate binding domain. So here's a kinase binding to a substrate. And a kinase, uh, as its source of phosphate, it binds ATP, generally, and removes the terminal phosphate off of ATP and transfers that phosphate to its substrate. So does it put it anywhere on the substrate? No. It transfers, to, it transfers it to specific hydroxyls within the substrate. So you hopefully remember the hydroxyl group. And hopefully you remember there are three amino acids that have hydroxyl groups on them. You should pause the video and see if you can remember those three amino acids and um, see if you can draw those three amino acids. But right now we're going to just talk about, in general, kinase transferring a phosphate group from ATP onto hydroxyl and that phosphate, and I'm not going to draw it out now, but it'll be drawn out in the video on kinases, um, that phosphate is now attached covalently to that oxygen uh, atom. And now this protein has become, has become phosphorylated. So that's what a kinase is, a quick review of kinases. So receptor tyrosine kinases. So growth factor receptors are kinases. There's a kinase region, a kinase domain, which we'll see on the next slide, within the receptor. But so I see the word receptor and I see the word kinase. What is tyrosine? Well, you remember tyrosine is an amino acid with a hydroxyl group. It's one of them. And so tyrosine kinases are enzymes that transfer a phosphate group to tyrosine hydroxyls. So here I'll draw the abbreviation for uh, tyrosine, the one letter abbreviation, Y. And if a protein is a tyrosine kinase, it will transfer the phosphate group from ATP to a specific, not every tyrosine, but a very specific tyrosine in its substrate. So that is what a tyrosine kinase is. Receptor tyrosine kinases are proteins that are receptors because they bind ligands like growth factors, and they also can act as an enzyme, a kinase. So that probably sounds really confusing. So let's let's unpack that even more. 
So here I'm going to draw a cell and there's a protein on the surface. And in previous videos, we said that thing was a growth factor receptor, right? Growth factor receptors, bind growth factors, triggering some signal into the cell. So that is a growth factor receptor. And it is also called a receptor tyrosine kinase. It is the same thing. It binds a growth factor and it acts as a tyrosine kinase. It does both of those things. So don't let the fact that there are two different terms for this type of protein confuse you. It is the same protein. So let's unpack it a little bit more. So we need to talk about regions of this protein because there are different regions of proteins that have different functions. And so the term that we use uh, for regions of a protein are domains. So these group of amino acids fold and do one thing, this group of amino acids folds and do another. It's all the same protein, it's all one single polypeptide chain, but different regions of the protein have a different function. So these regions we're calling domains. So here I've drawn the growth factor receptor, and I've drawn an N-terminus or the amine terminus, and the C or the carboxy terminus. So the N-terminus of the protein is typically uh, outside the cell, the C terminus is typically inside the cell. And so now when we're talking about different regions of the protein, let's use the term domain. So the region of the protein that is outside the cell, we typically refer to as the extracellular domain of the protein. Sometimes it's called the ectodomain because it's outside the cell. And so what do we find in the extracellular domain of receptor tyrosine kinases? Well, we find a region that folds up into a three-dimensional structure that binds ligands. Receptors bind ligands. And we know which ligands these receptors are binding. We saw them in the previous videos. They are growth factors, right? So this protein, that receptor, is a growth factor receptor. Growth factor receptors bind growth factors. And this domain is the ligand binding domain. So we saw that in previous videos. So PDGF binds the ligand binding domain of PDGFR. EGF binds the ligand binding domain of EGFR. Um, the three-dimensional structure of the domain signifies which growth factor will bind to it, can bind to it. So this is just a growth factor receptor, but now we're, we're taking it apart. We're looking at the different domains of it. There is a region of this protein called the transmembrane domain that spans the lipid bilayer. So hopefully you recall for proteins to be uh, inserted into the plasma membrane, they need to have a region of that protein that is typically very hydrophobic, has a lot of hydrophobic amino acids. Hopefully you remember the 20 amino acids. Some of them are very hydrophobic. You find a lot of those protein, uh, amino acids in this region of the protein. It allows that protein to be uh, tethered into the membrane of the cell. So we have the extracellular domain, we have the transmembrane domain, and now we're going to have the domain that is inside the cell, or the intracellular domain. And I know something that trips a lot of people up is that there are lots of different terms that are referring to the same thing. So this region of the protein that is inside the cell, you can refer to that as the intracellular domain, the cytoplasmic domain, or in this instance, the C-terminal domain, because it is at the end of the protein. So in for growth factor receptors or receptor tyrosine kinases, the intracellular domain is the cytoplasmic domain is the C-terminal domain. It is all the region that is inside the, uh, the cell. So we've got the region outside the cell, the extracellular domain that has the ligand binding region or ligand binding domain. Now we've got this intracellular domain, the cytoplasmic domain. In here, there is a tyrosine kinase domain. So we just talked about in the last video what a kinase is, right? Or in the last slide. And again, I got uh, two videos at least that talk about what kinases do and how they function. So you can watch those videos as a review. But some proteins um, have a region of them that act as a kinase. That is the kinase domain. 
So in the previous slide, I just showed you a kinase, just there. Now I'm showing you that you can have a region of a protein be a kinase. So growth factor receptors, those things that bind to growth factors, their tails, their cytoplasmic tails, can chain a region of the protein, a domain, its amino acids fold up into a 3D structure, and that region is a tyrosine kinase. So this growth factor receptor is also known as a receptor tyrosine kinase. So that region inside the cell, the intracellular domain, there is a chunk of amino acids that act as a tyrosine kinase. And again, what do tyrosine kinases do? They will bind ATP, pluck off that phosphate, and transfer the phosphate to tyrosines in their substrates. What are their substrates? The, does it put a phosphate on any tyrosine? No, it puts phosphates on very specific tyrosines and very specific proteins, which we will cover in a later video because it's confusing what it does. It, the, the substrates are confusing. Um, so I'm gonna spend a whole video on talking about its substrate. But this video is to get you to understand the structure of a growth factor receptor and how it is also a receptor tyrosine kinase. Most growth factor receptors like PDGFR, EGFR, FGFR, VEGFR, IGFR, they are all growth factor receptors, they bind growth factors, and they also act as receptor tyrosine kinases. And we will talk about how this kinase domain is regulated and its substrates in a later video.